My name is Jerry Hamowitz. I am a licensed professional engineer. I'm also a licensed water and wastewater treatment plan operator. I'm here tonight to talk about water uh, in Trenton, but I can't just talk about water. In the environment, everything is connected. Uh, we as a society are exposed to more chemicals in greater variety and greater quantity than ever before. And we're sicker than ever before. Things like autism, asthma, cancer, allergies, birth defects, gluten intolerance, infertility, and the feminization of humans. Uh, we're being poisoned by the combined effect of pesticides, chemicals in our food, pollution in the air, and pollution in the water. And corporations like Monsanto, Big Oil, Big Coal, the pesticide manufacturers are using their economic and political clout to cloud the issue and to try to keep people from getting to the bottom of what's really causing it. Uh, and who does this remind you of? Tobacco companies in the 60s and 70s? <laughs> In fact, uh, Monsanto's glyphosate was just classed as a carcinogen by the state of California. Perhaps the most insidious of the pollutants are what EPA refers to as the emerging pollutants. They're the ones with very low or even zero safe exposure standards, not limits, standards. These standards have not been put into law. They're buried in dozens of dis different industrial hygiene publications and public health publications. Uh, and they're in four classes. The carcinogens, which are slow acting, taking 10, 20, 30 years before they manifest. Endocrine disruptors. The endocrine disruptors uh, interfere with the proper function of the human hormone system. One of the most glaring effects is the feminization of humans. You've all heard about the feminization of fish and amphibians. Well, it's documented. We're doing it to ourselves, too. Uh, the next class is the teratogens, which interfere with the development of a fetus uh, during pregnancy. And the final one is the mutagens, which damage the DNA and can cause birth defects that will be passed on from generation to generation. Now, how do these get into the water and the food chain? Well, air pollution is actually one of the more significant sources. Coal-fired power plants in the United States drop 100 tons a year, 10 tons a year of mercury. Mercury is a carcinogen, an endocrine disruptor, and a teratogen. So it's three for one. Personal care products uh, are a problem. The over-the-counter pharmaceuticals, birth control pills. When you take a birth control pill, your body does not destroy that chemical. It gets passed out through the urine and down the sewer and into the river. Sewer plants do not uh, typically remove these trace contaminants. Wastes flush down the toilet. Whatever you flush down the toilet, it's going to end up in the river. Uh, pesticides in agriculture and chemicals that are fed to animals and chemicals in our food. Now, another thing that's going to have an effect on your water quality here at Trenton it's climate change. And that's one of the reasons that there are several reports out now that say that we should stop looking for more carbon reserves. There are reports that say if we burned all the carbon we know about now, we would have catastrophic global warming. And how does climate change impact your water quality? Well more severe flooding. When there's a major flood, chemicals get washed out of buildings all over the place. Cars with their gasoline and oil 
oil tanks and gas tanks come floating up out of the ground. And when there's a severe drought, there's less water in the river to dilute the pollutants that are there, and the biology changes. And that biology can have negative effects on the water quality, especially the algae blooms, which can cause taste, odor, and even toxicity. Now, getting back specifically to Trenton water, how many of you here have had a drink of water in the city of Trenton? Yeah. Well, congratulations. You are drinking the effluent from Allentown, PA, Port Jervis, New Jersey, Phillips, I'm uh, Port Jervis, New York, and Phillipsburg, New Jersey. We're all downstream from somebody. And therefore, we all have a very vested interest in what everybody else in the basin does. Uh, and again, 20, New Jersey only controls 23% of the Delaware Basin. Pennsylvania, 50%. New York, 18%. So what New York and Pennsylvania do has an impact on your water here in Trenton. Now, okay, I've scared you about your water. You're all going to run for your bottled water. Don't do it. Uh, the problem with bottled water is uh, phthalates from the plastic in the bottle. Uh, and because the FDA standards that regulate bottled water are not as strict as the EPA standards that regulate drinking water, uh, people have actually tested and found bottled water that is of lower quality than the water you're getting from your tap. And carbon footprint. Making all those plastic bottles costs uh, a lot of carbon. It uses oil. And those empty bottles become pollution when you're done with them. And then there's price. Here in Trenton, 748 gallons of water will cost you $2.12. The same amount of bottled water will cost you about $3,700. If you were to go out and buy the really cheap gallon jugs of distilled water for a dollar a pot, then it's only $748. But now you're buying bottled water again with the uh, phthalates and the VOCs. When they distill water, they only remove the minerals. The volatile organic chemicals, which are some of the nastiest uh, trace pollutants, go right on through the process and end up in the finished product. Uh, now, here at Trenton, to give you an idea of the magnitude of the problem, the flow in the river is 8,329,000 gallons, excuse me, uh, 8,329 million gallons a day. That's a lot of water. But remember, these uh, emerging pollutants, it doesn't take a lot to cause trouble. One part per million which is a typical value of chemicals that can cause serious problems, is only 8,329 gallons per day. That's a little more than one tank truck. One part per billion, and there are chemicals that will cause problems at one part per billion, is only 8.3 gallons. And at one part per trillion, and there are a few chemicals, I mean, if, if you've got a zero safe exposure limit. Well, one part per trillion is 6.5 teaspoons. Now, it takes two to eight million gallons of water to frack a well, and assuming fracking fluid is 1% chemicals, that's 10,000 gallons of chemicals going down each fracked well. If uh, so if 10% of that comes back, that is uh, easily goes over the amount. Now, conventional sewage treatment does not remove uh, the fracking waste. And EPA has said the first and least expensive and most effective way to protect drinking water quality is to protect the water source from pollution. To protect the drinking water at Trenton, New Jersey, New Jersey should support the DRBC and New York bans on fracking and should advocate a ban 
on the treatment of fracking waste at sewer treatment plants throughout the uh, basin. Now you can make a difference too. Who would have thought organic food would be so cheap as it is now and every supermarket would have an organic food section? What happened? More and more people were buying organic. You, if you have your own utility bill, can opt for a green utility supplier. That way you know you're getting renewable energy instead of getting your electricity from coal that's dropping mercury on you and your neighbors. And hopefully, when enough people switch their generators, people like Shell, who had planned to spend $8 billion looking for more carbon in the Arctic, will suddenly realize they're better off spending that $8 billion building wind, solar, wave energy. Thank you.